Good morning, lovely bitches, and a happy Ostara to you. Well, technically it's St. Patrick's Day, so a happy St. Paddy's to you, Slanche. Anyhow, I decided to celebrate Ostara or the spring equinox three days early so I can give you some awesome and magical ideas for Ostara spells and rituals, Ostara altar decorations, and of course, Ostara kitchen witchery and food. Of course, it also means that I get to celebrate twice. So this day in this witch vlog will be packed with lore, traditions and just a little bit of folklore and pagan history of Ostara and the spring equinox. I do hope you enjoy, but first let's have a little peek on what we are going to experience today. So we're going to start this day off with a little DIY project that you can use as an Ostara altar decoration or as part as an Ostara ritual or spell. We are making Sorbian Easter eggs or Ostara eggs, I guess. Now mine doesn't look as nice as they usually do because I have zero patience when it comes to arts and crafts, but I'll put a picture here for you. And I do have those very symmetrical traditional patterns on them that actually carry magical significance. And I'll tell you a little bit more about the different patterns that are used and of course how you can make those for your own Ostara celebration. So in many cultures around the world, eggs actually symbolize fertility and new beginnings. So it's not surprising that this is also a symbol for Ostara. Ostara is all about the world restarting, the spring starting, everything reawakening to life. Originally, those eggs stem from the Sorbian culture, which is at home in Lusatia. That's a cultural area between Germany and Poland, it's pretty much split. It's also very dear to my heart because this is where I met my partner. So back in the times, the egg being the fertility symbol, those eggs were actually then rolled over the fields in order for the fields to grow better. To this day, there is a game that the kids play with those eggs where they all roll them down a little a slope and it stems from that time, from that fertility ride. Now let's first start with how they are actually made. I would definitely recommend using white eggs because then you have a stronger contrast with the colors and it looks really, really nice. So what I actually wanted to do is to make a little Ostara display with those eggs or a little spell tree, if you can call it that and I have those twigs behind me where I will then hang the differently magically infueled eggs from. So I drilled two holes in the eggs, one at the top, one at the bottom, and I took a little straw and blew through it so that all of the glibber out of the egg um, goes out into a little bowl and I'm keeping this for later because later on we will do some kitchen witchery as well. And what you will then need next are little stems. So an easy and traditional way is to actually take a feather and you make sure that you remove most of the feather until you have the tip just like so and then you can cut it in shape like this for example for a triangle or like that for a diamond shape. And then I prepared another little instrument that we can use to make little dots or those little sun rays. And you can do so by just taking a little pin or a needle that has this glass head and you stick it into a pencil or into a piece of wood or whatever. So it's just convenient for you to grab. So once you have your stems ready, you need some wax because how this works is that we are putting wax on the egg and where the wax is on the egg, it won't get any color, it will stay white. If you have a little rechaud or an oil lamp, you can use that to melt your wax. If you don't have that, don't worry, you just need a potato and a spoon, and then you just need your telekinetic powers and you bend that spoon until it can serve you as a little holder for your wax. And then very, very quickly, we just dab the wax onto the egg with the stencils or with a little needle until we have the pattern that we enjoy or that has a specific meaning. But now let's look a little bit more into the specific patterns and how you can use it as a Ostara spell to work some folk witchcraft. This little triangle here is called a wolf's tooth and in itself it symbolizes the power of three or the holy trinity. And if you put it next to each other, 
and make a little chain or a little circle of it, it stands for protection. If it's layered on top of each other like a little pyramid, it just means that it's even a stronger protection. Now those little flowers here symbolize growth and a good future. And they can also in some cases symbolize home and family. So this little crow's foot here has actually multiple meanings. It can be used for wisdom, it can also mean magical power, or it could be the right way. So you can choose however you want to fuel it with intention. What looks like a star here is actually meant to be a bee comb and it symbolizes new beginnings. And if you have that little dot in the middle, it means fertility, a good harvest and abundance. And then of course you have the sun wheel that promises growth and health and freedom. And if you have little dots that are in a circle around the different flowers or sun wheels and stuff, that means that they're there to ban negative spirits. So they're kind of a protection for whatever is in that circle, for whatever what you want to protect. Now, in order to achieve those very symmetrical proportions, you can obviously use a couple of tools to help you. So in order to make lines, you could use, for example, a rubber band. In order to make oval shapes, I just used an empty tea light. And in order to make round shapes, you can use any kind of coins that you can find. And now you just plop it in some Easter egg coloration. You just want to make sure that you buy the one that is for cold water because obviously if you use warm water the wax would melt off and that would be a pity. Now you're just going to leave it in there for however long you want until you have the color intensity that you enjoy. And then all there is left to do is to melt off the wax which I'm doing right now with my little eggs here. And it's easiest to just hold it close to a candle flame, don't burn any pores. And then carefully wipe the wax off the egg until it's all smooth and waxless. So traditionally those Sobin Easter eggs are also decorated with different kinds of colors and it's very similar to color magic so you can also just use the colors which correspondences speak to you. So now that it's five million hours later and my hands are all dirty, we are going to go out for a lovely little spring walk and this is a great thing to do on a Stara, on the spring equinox to just see very mindfully what's blooming right now, what is changing in nature, spotting the first little signs of spring. <laughs> this place this is so cool so we walked quite far actually and we came to this place that I have totally forgotten that is here my grandfather used to take me here and it's called the devil's stone and it used to be or that's what literature says it used to be a Celtic offering site so this after the stein Wow! So many opfern, the Madonna God. This at the Devil Stone is thought to be an ancient Celtic offering site. In this area, we do have a lot of forests, a lot of special trees, a lot of special rocks or wells with very, very old names, and they stem from the pagan forefathers of this area because the Germanics obviously had this entire tree cult. For them, trees were the living places of souls, of ancestors, of gods, and wells were also sacred places in Germanic belief. In the Celts, we know that they had a lot of those stone altars, stone sites. So what you can actually see here that there have been by hand carved those little lines um, everywhere in the stone for fluids of some kind, let's say water, for water to um, be able to drip to the ground. 
It's really amazing how you can find back where those sacred sites were just in the name of things. We have like the holy tree or the three Bethan or Druid stone and many many more. With the Christianization of the area of course it was forbidden to practice at those sites or to worship at those sites. What was done was that a lot of those places especially the darker sacrifice kind of places were renamed into something like devils, like the devil's stone, the witch's well or the witch's ground. So it's just a cool little thing that you can go to those places and know that like 2000 years ago there were people there that thought of that place as, as holy and sacred and then performed the ancient rituals there. Here you can definitely feel that this place has a certain type of energy about it. It's very, it's a very peculiar feeling. Definitely wouldn't want to be alone here at night. <laughs> decided to use the rest of the afternoon for some wild foraging because I really want to make a nine herb soup. In German it's also sometimes referred to as Gründonnerstag Suppe and it's a traditional dish eaten this time of the year and it's actually a very very old dish. It's not quite certain if it stems from the Celts or the Germanic people because both were in this area but it definitely predates Christianity. So it's a soup made out of nine herbs and nine was considered a magical number. Here's the Holy Trinity so nine is a stronger three <laughs> if that makes sense. Obviously back in the times people didn't have convenient supermarkets like we do or any way to preserve like fresh greens. Are of course very very important for your body to put into in order to survive to have the necessary vitamins. I gathered the first herbs of spring and made it into the soup that is said to rejuvenate and give you power and life power and fertility. But what usually goes in it is some mild herbs herbs like stinging nettle or should have looked up the English words should have done that <laughs> wait let, let me let me check my phone so we have daisy stinging nettle goutweed malt garlic dead nettle dandelion bed straw ground ivy burnet sorrel pinewood and plantain so as you can see it quickly got very dark very cold and we went back home, we didn't find everything I needed for the soup, so I think I'll just save that for the proper spring equinox when it's a bit warmer. But nevertheless, we still need something yummy to warm us up and we still have all those eggs sitting in the fridge. So I thought I'm gonna take that chance to show you an amazing Ostara dessert recipe and it's called Torrijas. It's from Spain. It's very traditional for this time of the year. It's usually eaten during Semana Santa, so the week before Easter. I'm making a very traditional version with milk and eggs, but you can also make that with honey and with sweet wine and many other things. But let's get cooking! <laughs> Thank you. 
hanging out, lovely bitches, and I wish you a wonderful spring equinox and beautiful Ostara celebration. Let us know in the comments down below how you celebrate Ostara, what ideas for Ostara rituals or Ostara spells you have, or in general, how you go about celebrating the spring equinox. I'll see you very soon. Bye-bye.